yesterday morning session, I felt uh, inspired, especially listening to President Gorbachev. Today, listening to so many presentations, and especially uh, Federico's, I feel a hope, uh, a, a, a real hope for the future. I also feel and sense among many of us uh, a certain frustration, a frustration that arises out of the fact that we know there are things we can do. We know there are things that can be done to address these issues, practical things, but somehow it doesn't seem to be happening, not nearly fast enough and serious enough. We face today a multidimensional crisis. You're all familiar with it. It covers everything from ecology and employment to global security, human security. Uh, and the question is, how do we tackle all these issues? I think one of the themes that comes out of our discussions here is that they cannot be tackled in isolation. Any one of these problems, global warming is big enough so we can, or banning nuclear weapons, as Jonathan's worked so hard for, is important enough that to dedicate our lives to even one of these uh, seems to be more than an, amb an ambitious cause. But none of them seems to lend itself to resolution in isolation from the others. And I think the reason for that is, is they all have a common origin. They all have a common basis. They're all based in, if we look at it in an evolutionary sense, where humanity is today, we have not yet moved effectively beyond the nation state, but the problems we're grappling with today are really global in nature. We're still clinging to a concept, a legal concept of national sovereignty, where what we ne really need is the power, empowerment for humanity to act. So it raises a question, is there really a solution? Not a solution for one thing or another, for energy or uh, CO2, but for all together. Because unless we can solve all of them, uh, it's not clear that we've solved any. Uh, if we solve the, the global warming problem by freezing economic development at this level, well, uh, we're going to have a revolution on our hands, a, a physical, political, social revolution on our hands among all those who are not satisfied where they are. I think there is a solution. And the solution comes from what Federico mentioned is a new paradigm. And the question is, do we know what the new paradigm is? Have we put together all the pieces of the puzzle to say, if we do all of these things, we can meet all the essential objectives, whether it's for peace or economic security or ecological sustainability? And I think that's what, there's still some thinking that needs to be done. Uh, we at the World Academy and in co collaboration with Club of Rome and many other organizations that we're seeking to involve are trying to see whether all the pieces of the puzzle can be put together. When we talk about a, glow, a paradigm change, it's not enough that we have an answer. It's, it's also necessary that we're convinced there's a way to make that answer effective in practice. Well, if we look historically, there are times when radical change has taken place for one reason or another. It happened somewhat inadvertently 200 years ago after Thomas Malthus said that humanity reached a billion people, the earth is overcrowded, there'll never be enough food uh, for more, and we're in for a crisis. There was a revolution that took place, we call it the Industrial Revolution, which changed all that. And unfortunately, maybe we came to be convinced that technology uh, is the answer to all our problems. In the 1930s, we had a, a crisis started in the US and spread from there of the Great Depression, where we realized technology alone is not the solution. We need another type of revolution. FDR introduced the New Deal. It was a social, a social political revolution to change the values and basis on which government acts. I think today we need an intellectual revolution and a revolution that really changes how we perceive the sources of power in the world. Intellectually, the paradigm 
has to be human-centered paradigm, not money-centered or growth-centered. How do we maximize the social welfare and human security of everybody on Earth? And when we ask that question, I think the answers become pretty clear. There are answers to that. In doing that, the question is, what will be the driving force? There's a, a natural tendency that we look to government as the driving force for this, because who's going to change things if it isn't government? Unfortunately, government still largely represents the nation state. Revolutions rarely take place because of governments. Revolutions take place when the people, when the society says that the powers that be and the structures that be are unacceptable and we are going to change them. And the question is, how do we release the energy of global society as the energy of people in this room and the inspiration of people in this room has been released in order to bring about hopefully what is a peaceful social evolution but I'm convinced that if it doesn't happen peacefully, it will happen anyway, because the frustration levels and uh, lack of fulfillment will continue to grow until it does. How do we bring about that evolution? I don't think it's by lining up in front of the seats of power and trying to convince people who, as Federico also mentioned, are very, most of our governments are more plutocracy than democracy today, more representing certain powers and elites in society. I don't see the revolution is going to come from there, as important it is for us to try. So, is there a way that we collectively, global civil society, which is a force that's never existed before as it exists today, especially after the internet, is there a way that we can reach out and release the social energies of global humanity to work for a solution that shows there is an answer. There is an answer to the employment issue, to the food issue, to the ecological issue, to the security issue, but we need a new paradigm that delivers it. Two practical suggestions, and one of them is I think we need to use the institution of education globally, which has been reserved into the, the purview of universities. Now education is exploding, and education is spilling out, breaking out of the universities. So what is being taught has a possibility, we have a possibility of changing the paradigm of thought in the world rather than expecting it to be done through the traditional academic disciplines or by them alone. And I think for that, global civil society and all the, all the organizations in this room have an important, a key role to play. We're calling it a World University Consortium, not a consortium of universities, but a consortium of thinkers who have solutions and new perspectives that need to be delivered to the world through new media, through new mechanisms. And I think it's also necessary that once we have in place a mechanism for world public education, that we also have a way of getting responses from the global public. And today, the global public is disenfranchised. As the blacks were in my country uh, until very recently, as women were all over the world, until very recently, global humanity has no say. And we need to create those mechanisms where if not through our national governments, then directly, I'd say through a global human referendum, we can directly poll global public opinion and carry the weight of human, of the, of human opinion on the issues that we're grappling with. Thank you.